Hey everyone, Brendan Sander here, how are you? Thank you so much for joining me and welcome to a special review. Yes, it is finally here after 18 long years. We have the brand new Rolling Stones album, Hackney Diamonds, just came out on Friday, October 20th of 2023. I can't believe it's here. I've got a lot to break down on this album for you. I'll do an unboxing and everything and we'll get into that in just a minute. But before we do, if you're new to my channel and you haven't already hit the subscribe button, please do. Also, leave a comment, hit like, all those things do help and I would greatly appreciate it. And of course, if you turn on notifications, you're going to stay up to date on really cool videos like this with the brand new review for the new Rolling Stones album. So I want to jump back just a bit, set the mood, give you guys a little bit of history here. Uh, they formed in 62, but the interesting thing is that the band has always considered 1963 when drummer Charlie Watts joined the band as their actual start. And so they've been celebrating their anniversaries based on 1963 for a very long time, making this year here, 2023, their 60th anniversary. And I say, what a better way to celebrate 60 years than to drop a brand new album. You know, not every band does that. Some bands come out, celebrate, and they just tour, things like that. But no, the Rolling Stones have given us 12 new pieces of music here, and we're gonna talk about that going forward. So, uh, the interesting thing with this is that uh, they released their debut in 64, which had three albums actual release, but two of those being US. So it actually throws things off where Hackney Diamonds is the 24th British studio album, 26th American studio album. So if you've heard me saying that in the past or anyone else, that's why, because early on, there was some different releases in the US market versus the British market. Um, but I've always thought that it was really interesting about the band is that they've never broken up. They've also always managed to somehow stay current no matter what. You know, they mix in new modern flavor with their uh, blues rock and R&B stylings that they've always had, sort of the undertones of the music. But somehow they've always still managed to stay on top of things, helping to propel the band to over 200 million in album sales. I mean, not a lot of bands can say that. Uh, certainly the Rolling Stones uh, being one of them. A lot of people have considered the Beatles as the greatest rock band. I've always seen them as a pop band, so I will go down and always say that the Rolling Stones are in fact the greatest rock and roll band. And that brings us, of course, to what we want to talk about, the brand new album. Uh, this one here is the first one since the passing of Charlie Watts. As I mentioned early on, it has been 18 years since the Bigger Bang in 2005, but also it's been seven years since we've gotten a new album. This was a blues cover album uh, called Blue and Lonesome from 2016. So seven years on from that, I mean, when they put that out, they were just taking a break uh, while they were in the studio working on what would eventually lead to this. Um, they've had many, many sessions over that time frame, but unfortunately it took seven more years to get an album. The thing is, back in 2020, during the pandemic, though not lockdown, uh, they did release a brand new song, and that was the first new original piece of music that they had put out that wasn't a cover song. And that was called Living in a Ghost Town, which I thought was fantastic. One of the best things uh, that had come from them in recent years. Unfortunately, that is not on the new album. I mean, I guess it depends on how you look at it. Fortunately, we're getting another song in its place, but I really like that one so much. Um, but I'm guessing that they've got, you know, albums worth of material that sound like different things from different uh, time frames of recording. Living in a Ghost Town was just one of those that got uh, released. Now, the thing is, this album has 12 tracks on it, uh, clocks in at 48 minutes, perfect length for vinyl, but I could have used a few more songs uh, for the CD version of it, but it is nice. It doesn't wear itself out, flows very well throughout it. I'm gonna get into more of that when I break down the songs and stuff. Um, two of the tracks though come from 2019, a recording session that then featured, of course, Charlie Watts, who was still alive at that time. So he did build two songs around uh, his uh, recordings. That's track number seven, Mess It Up, and track number eight, Live By The Sword. 
Uh, interesting, Live by the Sword also features former Rolling Stone member uh, Bill Wyman on bass. So essentially creating a reunion of the classic era. And I thought that was another very cool feature about this uh, release here. Um, the rest of the tracks that are on this album, though, were recorded in December of 2022. So this is a very current album. It got mixed early in this year, 2023. And here we are getting it in October. So in all, this is a very current album. Even though recording sessions go back almost 18 years, uh, they really pulled from present day to do this. And who knows, maybe we'll see that other stuff um, eventually. I certainly hope so. Other guests that are on this album include Paul McCartney from Beatles. That's great having him play bass. Elton John is on here playing piano. So is Stevie Wonder. And then Lady Gaga doing some uh, vocals with uh, Mick Jagger on, um, let's just check the track, uh, Sweet Sounds of Heaven. Didn't want to get that wrong on here. But lots of cool guests and makes this album, you know, a little bit more than it is. But they've always had guests on their albums. Now, the other 10 tracks that are on here that come from December of 2022 feature Steve Jordan on drums, who's uh, been around for a long time. He was uh, picked to fill in for Charlie Watts when he first was taken some time off due to health reasons. Unfortunately, uh, we all know how that turned out. Um, and uh, apparently, though, during this uh, recording session in 20, you know, December of 2022, they recorded 23 songs and 11 of those um, have not been released. So I don't know, does that mean that we might get a follow-up album later this year? I don't know, certainly hope so. I, if they release them, I hope they don't just do it as a deluxe edition. I do hope that we actually get another album. That would be really great. All right, but we really wanna get down into the album itself. I wanna break that down. So it's produced by Andrew Watt, who co-wrote the first three songs on the album. The rest of it is by uh, Keith Richards and Mick Jagger. Andrew's been gaining quite a resume working with some really big names in the rock world. Uh, we got Ozzy Osbourne, Iggy Pop, Morrissey, uh, worked with Eddie Vedder, but he's also working on the current Pearl Jam album. And he's certainly done a lot in the modern pop world and stuff uh, with present day artists, which I think is how he got his foot in working with such classic artists. But he's kind of made this little shift here and now working with the Rolling Stones, I mean, that's gotta just be the, the creme de la creme for him in terms of bands that he has worked with here. Uh, you know, not many people can say they have worked with the Rolling Stones on an album. And Andrew's always seemed to have had a really good track record, uh, getting sort of the, the best out of an artist, returning to them, them to their classic sound. And I think that's very much uh, what he has done here. We do have a very classic sounding uh, album in terms of song structure and things like that. But what I wanna talk about is really the sound or the mix of this album here. And I feel it's lacking, unfortunately. It doesn't take away from the songs, but it is something different that you gotta get used to. Typically, uh, the Rolling Stone albums have a much more slick or crisp production on them. And this one does not. This has a much more raw feel to it. I feel like uh, they've sort of taken on that guise of a garage band. And that may well be them trying to work something modern in terms of um, the sounds that are out there today and that sort of stuff. But the sound on this is very even. There's not a lot of space in terms of the instrumentation. And there's a lot of fuzz on this. And that can be a good thing and a bad thing. I mean, there's, there's whole movements that love that really fuzzy sounding guitar and bass sound. And um, certainly something that is, is interesting. And I think it's just the Rolling Stones trying something new as opposed to just resting on their laurels and, and churning out an album that sounds like everything else that they did. So I'm okay with that. And as I said, it certainly does not affect the quality of the songs uh, themselves. Um, the other thing on this is there's lots of classic elements in those songs. It's full of energy. So even where the mix may not be as sharp or slick or bright or something like that, uh, there's full of energy. There's lots of excitement in it. Um, it really makes it uh, hard for me to believe that Mick Jagger, who is 80 years old now, uh, he sounds fantastic vocally on this album. And then we've got 
Keith Richards. He's 79, and I think he's still playing as good as ever. And of course, you've got Ronnie Wood, who's a bit younger, is 76. I've always felt he was the unsung hero of the group. And just those three guys together, along with all the amazing guests on here, just continue to prove that the Rolling Stones, in my opinion at least, are one of the greatest rock and roll bands of all time. So let's talk about the songs that are on this. There's some really cool standout tracks. I've got five of them here I wanna to talk to you about. Track number two, Get Close. One of the first songs that jumped out at me on this, featuring Elton John on piano. Uh, it's a nice mid-pace rocker. It's got a cool little groove to it that just makes you wanna get up and get into it. Uh, you know, sort of shake your booty, that kind of a thing. Uh, track number four, Bite My Head Off. This one features Paul McCartney on bass. And next to the debut single that came out, Angry, I think this one here might be the most rockin' song on the album. Lots of fuzz on this one. This is the one that really made me hear that and where I, I'm making that statement. And then I began to really kind of hear it and everything else on the album. But it does give this song a very unique sound to it. It makes it stand out. So whereas I'm saying, you know, this has a different sound of the album, the track that really did that is in fact, I think one of the best songs on the album. Track number five, which is my personal favorite on the album called Whole Wide World. This one here is a mid-paced rocker, but I think it's really beautiful. There's just some beautiful melody and stuff within it. The lyrics are great. And it's got one of the best guitar solos of the whole album on it. Track number seven, another favorite of mine, Mess It Up. This is one of two tracks that features drummer Charlie Watts on it. It's just a straight up rocker. Classic drumming from Charlie on here. It's a nice tribute to have him doing. And we've got uh, Andrew Watt playing the bass on this one. And it's got that sort of classic funky disco feel to it that the Stones have been known for doing in the past. And I just feel like when I was listening to this, I kind of felt like it was this classic lost track but of course we know it is a, a new song um, but it's just in my opinion that good and the last one to touch on here is uh, track number 10 tell me straight this is the only song to feature keith richards on lead vocals and as i was moving through the album because normally his track is up near the beginning maybe track number four five or six somewhere in that range i started to get worried that keith richards was not going to take lead vocal on a rolling stones album but in fact he does and not only does he sing on it but i actually think it's one of the best tracks on the album in typical fashion it's a classic keith uh, ballad and he sounds great. So you've not only got Mick Jagger sounding great, but you've got Keith Richards also sounding great. And again, just proving how great of a band they are still 60 years on. But let's talk, uh, or let's look at the album at least. So I got a jewel case edition of this, but there are uh, digipack versions of this. There's a lot of them. You go to the band's website, you can get all kinds of merch and stuff like that. But I wanted to go with the classic uh, where, you know, me personally i grew up with the jewel case i love the jewel case i don't want any of those digi packs so i got that uh here's the back side of it i do like when they stack the song listing like that as opposed to running them uh you know across that way but the art itself i have to say i'm not overly impressed with it kind of a big deal was made about who this was and it was uh you know modern digital art but to me that's exactly what it looks like it looks like it was cre created with a computer it doesn't look warm and this idea of you know hackney diamonds and there's the heart and so forth but where's the tongue where's the the logo of the rolling stones so i was a little bummed about that overall i like it i do like the whole red and black thing and i like the way they're writing rolling stones in the sort of broken glass feel of it but all in all i i don't know it didn't do a whole lot for me here's the inside and where we actually get the tongue again in that broken glass but uh, just not my favorite but then again when you've got 60 years of the rolling stones and all these different iconic tongue logos you know they can't all be winners but there it is it does happen it just doesn't appear on uh, the front or the back and i was a little surprised by that pop the disc out there isn't anything on the underside of mine as i understand it the digipack version does have uh photos and stuff in it but unfortunately this one here just full of lyrics and they're running them horizontal so <laughs> you know how i feel about that but we do get the lyrics and that's cool the part that i like about it most 
uh, comes here where they actually tell you who is playing on each track. So at least we do get that information there um, and the backside of it. So bottom line, on this album here, you know, nothing is ever going to top the uh, Rolling Stones of the 1970s. Personally, that's where I feel that the band hit their creative peak. I'm sure you guys all have your own opinions of that. I love the album Some Girls from 1978. And uh, that said, they've continued to always release very high quality, career-defining albums from throughout the career. So they may have hit their peak in the late 70s, but I feel like that throughout their 60 years, they've still made some amazing albums. Um, and I think that this album here personally is no different from that. It is just another one in their album. It is not something that is subpar or less than or anything of that nature. It is another high point for them. Um, you know, while it's got that modern mix on it and it's got a more raw sound on it, the songs on here are outstanding. They're very high caliber. They're interesting throughout. I do not lose interest throughout this album, the 48 minutes. Uh, while I said I feel it was a little short, certainly I could always use more Rolling Stones, but sometimes it is great to just have a very good album start to finish all the way through where you don't get tired of it. It's got a lot of peaks and valleys in it, and I love that. Uh, so there's always something uh, keeping of interest while listening to this. Now, there's uh, two overt blues songs on here, and I'm not the biggest fan of the blues. You guys know that. Um, they close out each side of the L. LP, track 6 and track 12. But I sort of get it in terms of their history and their legacy and that this is part of that. And in my opinion, or at least the way that I'm seeing it is, the band is coming full circle. They're coming back to their blues roots and they're closing out each side of the album that way. And the, the most sort of overt blues number is the very last one on the album. Track number 6 I'm kind of okay with. Track 12 really does it, and it's got a very raw recording, may even have been recorded with a single mic, sort of like uh, the tracks that they did for Blue and Lonesome on here. In fact, it feels like an outtake from that, but I understand that it's not. Um, but that's how the album is, and I do kind of like that, again, when you understand the context and history of the band being around 60 years, uh, celebrating their anniversary. This may well, in fact, be their final album. And you know what? If this is the final album of the Rolling Stones, if we don't see those other 11 tracks that were recorded at the same time in these sessions, I'll be okay with that. This is a fantastic album for such a classic band to go out on top with. Personally, do yourself a favor, check out this album. I think you're gonna be pleasantly surprised. I think you may well agree with me on a lot of what I've talked about here. But if nothing else, it is just a great rock and roll record from one of the greatest rock and roll bands of all time. All right, everyone, I hope you enjoyed this review. Uh, certainly let me know your thoughts about the album. And uh, take care, I'll talk to you real soon. Bye-bye, everyone.